I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today I'm reviewing a car that will be instantly familiar to many of you. This is the seventh generation Volkswagen Golf. Though the Golf has been around for decades, Australians have really taken to this car in the past 10 years. Why? Because the Golf has absolutely nailed its brief of being a premium car accessible to almost everybody. Certainly, as I look at this Golf here, it certainly looks and feels like something a little bit special. But is the Golf's reputation fair, or is it all smoke and mirrors? Is the Volkswagen really as good as everybody says it is? Well, jump in with me, and let's start finding out. This Golf is the $33,000 Highline model, which means it scores some extra luxury features like these beautifully comfortable and supportive leather seats and a full climate control system. But every Golf from the 23 grand base model to the $57,000 Golf R share the same basic interior. And as I think you'll be able to see, that basic interior is a lovely place to be. From the soft touch materials that stretch right over the dashboard to the top of the doors, and the lovely leather stitched steering wheel and gear stick, and yes, that traditional golf thunk when you close the door. The word that comes to mind is quality. One small misstep would just be this hard surface down here where your leg tends to rest on a long drive, which is worthy to be rectified by Volkswagen. It is true that the interior design here in the Volkswagen Golf is more conservative than what you'll get on something like a Mazda 3, but for people like me who see beauty in well-made things, that really doesn't matter. And this driver-inclined set of stack here still looks good, and every Golf gets a 6.5-inch colour touchscreen in the centre. It's a nice, sharp screen, it's smart, it detects incoming fingers and gives you contextual menus. This Highline comes with navigation too, but all Golfs these days come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I found myself using most of the time. The Golf is being updated in a couple of months, and one thing I'd like to see Volkswagen change is the black and white screen between the gauges. It'd be great if it switched to one that was color and had a few more features. But you do have plenty of choice up here for your storage, including a small central cubby here, a glove box, two cup holders, and generous felt-lined door bins, which means there's plenty of space for all your stuff. Plus, the traditional boxy shape of the Golf means that your visibility is good. However, the optional blind spot monitoring system would make things even easier. With newer small cars getting bigger and bigger, the Golf no longer leads this segment in how much room you get in the back seat. However, for kids or smaller adults, the accommodation back here is more than good enough. For me, it's six foot nothing. I've got good headroom, and adequate legroom sitting behind myself here. Plus, this model has a fold-down armrest which has some cup holders, which is a nice amenity for longer trips, and the backrest is at a decent angle, which means your passengers back here will certainly be comfortable for a longer drive. Plus, there's generous space allocated down here, so your passengers can put a nice big water bottle into the door bins too. Volkswagen recently told us that the Golf will never be the most heavily discounted hatch in its segment, which means that you'll pay a couple of thousand more for a Golf over something like a Hyundai i30. But we feel that you get what you pay for. And then there's plenty of choice in the Golf range, everything from a 92 TSI base model in the low 20,000s, through to the $26,840 Golf Trendline, which we consider to be an excellent all-purpose car, through something more special like this $32,990 Highline. And that's before we traverse into sporty GTI or Golf R territory, plus there's a wagon available for most of the models in the range. But we'll dedicate a unique review to all of those different cars, so make sure you hit subscribe. Behind one of the Golf's little party tricks, which is a boot release hidden in the VW badge, lies a decently sized 380 litre boot. That's enough space for a couple of small suitcases to fit with ease, and things like the school bags and a big shop will get in there with absolutely no problem. Plus, there's some handy little shopping bag hooks in there, which means that your milk and eggs won't fly around. It sounds simple, but it actually makes a really big difference. Now, the Golf's boot is a far cry from something like the Honda Civic's 500 plus litres, but for most people, this is going to be good enough. And if you need more space, those back seats do fold, and in a huge improvement from the Mark VI Golf, they now lie flat. The way the Golf sets itself apart from other small cars is in the way that it drives. Like the way that it looks or the way the interior feels, the Golf just drives in a refined way. 
and it's a hard feeling to describe, but basically the Golf drives like a bigger, more expensive and more luxurious car than it actually is. Every Golf comes with a turbocharged four-cylinder engine uh, and all of them manage to combine good punch with really good fuel economy and decent smoothness. This Highline model comes with a 110 kilowatt 1.4 litre petrol and like all of the petrols, it's a really terrific all-rounder engine. It's great in the city and it's also good in the country. Over our week with the car, we average just under 7 litres per 100 kilometres with a bias towards city driving and in the country it's around 5.5 litres per 100 kilometres. So it's probably not worth upgrading to a more expensive diesel unless you do really long miles. Plus, with 250 newton metres of torque, this 110 TSI feels like more like a warm hatch than an economy car. But most people will go for and love the 92 TSI petrol, which produces 92 kilowatts and 200 newton metres, but manages to feel much stronger than that. I'd know because I've owned one for several years now. The Golf's DSG automatic transmission definitely feels different to a conventional automatic and it's significantly improved for the Mark 7 car, but if you've never driven a double clutch automatic, you'll find that it takes just a bit of getting used to with some initial clunkiness and rolling around that you'll quickly master. In the city, the Golf is really manoeuvrable because the electric power steering is nice and light and parking is also easier now because every Golf comes with a reversing camera. Plus, the boxy and sharp lines of this car means that visibility is good, so you won't have any trouble getting it into a tight space. In the country, the Golf really impresses with how tight the chassis feels and how agile the whole car becomes. And in fact, every Golf seems to encourage you to really push on and you can feel that soul of the Golf GTI in every single one of these engines. And I found that it's a really enjoyable car actually to drive out there and the handling really comes alive, so that was impressive. And the suspension is mostly up for the job, although the Golf can get just a little bit crashy over Sydney's really bad potholes, and that's where cars with a specifically Australian tuned suspension do a better job in the comfort stakes. But basically, the Golf's driving dynamics are a product of how cohesive this car feels. From how strong the turbo petrol engines are, to how agile the handling feels, and just how smooth and refined the entire experience is. That's what sets the car apart. And it's something you have to drive to really experience. At the start, I asked whether the Golf's reputation was fair. I think we can say that it is. For the price, it's hard to think of better value for money. I've said a few times in this review that the Golf feels special. And that's it, really. This car is special. It's not like other small cars because other small cars wish that they were a Volkswagen Golf.